Yes, very important. So, first of all, it was a great event last night, uh, um, being there together with all the colleagues and, and all of the kind of friends and environment there was, was excellent. And then inside this environment, getting being the kind of recognition for our activities around the SON, so the self-organizing networks in the LTE domain was, was very important for me, for our company as totally also. Because, you know, we're spending so much effort inside this self-organizing network, which is so crucial for the future of the LTE and the efficiency in the LTE, that I was very pleased that this gets now really the recognition of our customers, of the competitors even, and then um, also in the entire industry. So uh, it resonated already very well in our organization. I shared this already over the night uh, with some of our teams being very active on this during the last, let's say, weeks, months, years already. So we are working intensively on this since more than three years, being led by a lot of our lead customers. And now getting the award for it was just superb. Yes, LTE is definitely defining the radio roadmaps in the moment, even though, let's say, I would say the kind of biggest volumes which we are shipping is certainly in the traditional type of radio still, the GSM, the wideband CDMA, and then again also, as you might know, we have been acquiring the Motorola, which is now adding the CDMA and the WiMAX on top of our, in our portfolio. So all of this is ongoing high volume shipments, but all of them, independently from which type of campus you're coming, it's 3GPP, it's GPP2, it's IEEE from the WiMAX, all of this is evolving towards the LTE, which makes it such a big thing and such a great thing. So which is on our roadmap is really, first of all, the smooth evolution of all of the installed base towards a kind of LTE future and then to ensure a kind of software upgradability even towards the LTE Advanced. You know, we've just closed the 3GPP uh, release 10 standard, almost closed uh, now in the industry, which is defining the LTE Advanced. It's bring another kind of very good type of enhancements toward the LTE, like relaying, like carrier aggregation, which is making a lot of more use out of the spectrum. And what is, let's say, defining and driving us is bringing the installed base into this domain, ensuring that whatever we are designing today is capable of the future in this domain, so it can evolve in this type of area, so that our, com uh, that our customers have got an investment protection and that we go clearly, clearly in this single-run, multi-radio domain where all of the kind of radio technologies collapsing and going to combine in one single type of base station environment there. So this is kind of first big theme. And then another big theme running around it is that the cells are shrinking. So as much as the capacity is now evolving and growing inside the networks, as much we need to bring the capacity closer to the customer. So the hotspots are more and more coming inside the area. So what does it mean? So it does mean basically that with a kind of macro layer environment as we are used to having in our kind of industry with the traditional base station uh, capacities and so on, this will run into some kind of capacity limits. And the more efficient way to use it than the spectrum, the scarce spectrum, which we have all, our, all of our customers in our hand, is with some kind of small cells. So we need to come up with a good solution, and this is what we have on our drawing boards, a good solution with small cell complementing the kind of macro cell environment. And all of this then in a multi-radio domain for 2G, 3G, LTE, LTE advanced type of domain, which is then working together. And again, here this SON, the self-organizing functionality, plays a kind of umbrella role, which really makes it impossible, let's say, let's say important to get this only done in a kind of good way together with the SON. But I think the key topic here on the small cell is that it needs to be, let's say, complementary to the kind of macro layer. So coming with a small cell with a kind of, I don't know, femto standalone, like some of our competitors are doing, it, it, it brings a lot of complexity and problems towards our customers, which means that you have a lot of interferences at the cell edges, you're losing a lot of, lots of capacity on the, on the cell edges and so on. So what is crucial and important is that the small cell topic is part of the macro at the same time. So we're using the same type of hardware, using the same type of software domain, and using the same type of umbrella system from the management and interference cancellations, and so on and so on. So it needs to be part of one portfolio. It needs to be part of a one solution, which sticks together, and only then it makes a real difference. So this is what it makes us on the Nokia Siemens side so much different, because we're really having this in our heart of our activities, having this in our DNA, to really bring this as a full-fledged type of portfolio on the market. Yes, so first of all, you know, we've got a great, let's say, uh, milestone just completed just two weeks ago. We've been now acquiring the type of Motorola assets. There are 6,900 people approximately who are joining our team now, uh, which is a tremendous success. We have been a little bit blocked in this environment for some of the reasons back and forth, so we've been waiting eagerly to get this done. Now we are there. It's just two weeks ago, so this was the moment which I've been waiting personally at least half a year for, so that we really get this type of additional power inside our company there. So just right now, uh, we get an additional huge footprint inside the US. 
which was a little bit on the Nokia Siemens side, a little bit of kind of real our stronghold, honestly, up to now. Now we have got really kind of US-based company, which is part of our company integrated in it, meaning the teams locally there, which gives us a lot of power on the market locally to serve the local customers, and then also a lot of local customers, which we get there. And not only this one, so Motorola has also been very strong all around the world, and then especially also in Japan, on the other area of the world. So now also with this type of assets, we are getting into it. We are getting a huge type of additional power also in the Japan market, which is important for us. We have been pretty good already out there with the Docomo, with the SoftBank, now also the KDDI and also the KDDI LTE gets now into our type of uh, portfolio type of activity there. So this complements our activity very much. And now we have got a full-fledged portfolio on the radio domain, which means the 3GPP, all of these, what you know, the 3GPP2, like the CDMA, and there's a long life of the CDMA, so nothing wrong with the CDMA. Some guys are telling, okay, CDMA, end of level, so it's not true. So there's long life, like for the GSM, and there's a long evolution path on this also, a good evolution path towards the kind of new technologies. And then there's the WiMAX also, and there's also WiMAX business, which is, let's say, generating kind of good additional customers, which were a little bit outside the reach of our end there in the moment. So we've just set the kind of environment now to really, let's say, grow significantly further in these domains, getting us a good Additionally good customers, getting us additionally good R&D power and experiences there, and I'm really looking delighted into the future to grow this further. There.